to get back on track. So, divisibility rules. Do you have any questions or concerns so far going into this? No? Great. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is go through these, and then we're going to spend a part of today analyzing problems that have these as the main issues in the problems. So we're going to see how well we do on these problems, basically. All right. um, what I want to stress to you throughout, by the way, is the fact that this is not a, a math test as you know it. And reasoning and your ability to see information in alternative ways is critical to doing well on this test. So what we do here, the reason I'm stressing these, it's not that I don't trust you in doing them. It's you have to be able to do them incredibly fast and incredibly comfortably. Different issue entirely, right? Prime factorization. What is prime factorization? First of all, big question. Is one a prime number? Yes or no? No. Why not? It just isn't, right? <laughs> Why isn't one a prime number? Good question, right? It just isn't a prime number. Right. A number is prime if it divides by one and by itself. Presumably that by itself means other than one. So one is not a prime number, right? Um, prime factorization is an incredibly basic incredibly useful skill. If you don't do this comfortably, you will be in trouble. Can someone please prime factorize 20 for me? I think I ought to do this already. No, those are factors of 20. Oh. I want to prime factorize 20. Five and four? All right, let's take the terms literally to prime factorize, to find the factors that are prime numbers. 5 is a prime number, 4 is not. What happens next? Keep going, you're on the right track. 5 and 4. 2 and 2. Right, 2 and 2, which becomes effectively 2 squared. Right. I always express in prime factorization prime factors in exponential form. For example, if we prime factorize 40, this reduces to 2 cubed times 5. Does that make sense, everybody? 8 times 5, 8 is not a prime number, 8 is 2 cubed. 